flex zone. No flex zone. The ocean is divided into many zones. Two basic divisions of the ocean are the benthic zone and pelagic zone. The pelagic zone is all the water, and the benthic zone is all the land at the bottom of the water. The highest level of the benthic zone is the intertidal or littoral zone. This is where the ocean meets the land. The intertidal zone is the shallowest area of the benthic zone and is found between the low and high tide lines. Because it's found in between the tides, the intertidal zone is an always changing environment. Intertidal organisms include grazers like the periwinkle snail and the fingernail limpet, barnacles like the buckshot and gooseneck barnacles, this is a load of barnacles, as well as sea stars, sea urchins, seaweeds, and sea. For an animal to survive in a marine environment, it's always a challenge. But what part of the marine world presents the most challenging conditions? One of the areas that surely has to top anybody's list is the intertidal. The intertidal is the area between the lowest low tide and the highest high tide. The conditions here are some of the harshest of all marine environments. The organisms that live in the intertidal are subjected to wild fluctuations in salinity, temperature, and of course they're constantly punished by relentless wave energy. The challenges that the plants and animals here face are unlike those of any other part of the marine world. The next level of the benthic zone is the neuritic or sublitoral zone. The neuritic zone is the coastal waters on the continental shelf and is below the tides, so it's always underwater. There's a presence of light, which allows organisms to photosynthesize and results in the most variety of benthic life. Neuritic organisms include coral and sponges. The next benthic zone is the bathial zone. The bathial zone starts at the continental slope and extends down 4,000 meters. It's located above the abyssal or midnight zone. There's little or no sunlight in the bathial zone and it gets as cold as 4 degrees Celsius along with very high pressures. Some bathial organisms include the brittle and basket star, 
as well as crinoids, or sea lilies, and sea cucumbers. Below the bathyal zone is the abyssal zone. No sunlight reaches the abyssal zone, as it's four to 6,000 meters deep. There's a lack of nutrients here, and organisms must withstand great pressures to survive. These organisms include the tube worms and the Bethelgrea crab. The deepest benthic zone is the Hadal zone. The Hadal zone is 6,000 to 11,000 meters deep, and this is where you find deep sea trenches. A common Hadal organism is the Foraminifera and the deep sea dragonfish. That's all for benthic zones. Now into pelagic zone. Two sections of the pelagic zone are the neuritic zone, which we talked about before, the water above the continental shelf, and the oceanic zone. This is the water off of the continental shelf. The oceanic zone is divided into five zones based on depth. Oh, let's name the zones, the zones, the zones. Let's name the zones of the open sea. Hooray! Come on, Nemo. Oh, you better stay with me. Epilogic, metapologic, mesopelagic, all the rest are too deep for you and me to see. Epipelagic, mesopelagic, bathio, bisopelagic. The epipelagic layer is the first 200 meters into the ocean. Sunlight can still penetrate, so the water is warm. We're starting our dive in Roatan, Honduras, and it's a perfect place to do this dive because the water is so very clear. And once we go about 150 feet across the continental shelf, then we'll go straight down the slope that extends about 3,000 feet down. All right, so we just shut the hatch, and Carl is getting ready to drive us down deeper and deeper. Let's see what we can find. And in doing so, we'll be able to pass through and describe many of the ocean zones. So let's start with the first one the epipelagic zone. Right now we're at the surface. Photosynthesis is really abundant here. You've got corals and algae and phytoplankton that provide life for the entire area. This is the place that most people see. In fact, it's defined as the place where photosynthesis can still take place, which in the tropics extends from the surface to about, well, 600 feet. The mesopelagic zone is the next 200 to 1,000 meters. It's also called the twilight zone because some light can penetrate, but there's no photosynthesis. This zone contains a thermocline, which is a large temperature change. Organisms that live here have low energy tissues and sluggish lifestyles to cope with low food energy, since no algae can grow. Many of the animals are bioluminescent. And as we go deeper, the low light brings us to a new zone, the mesopelagic zone. We're in the twilight zone. That's what the mesopelagic area is called out here. The light is still coming through, but there's not enough for photosynthesis. And you see this stuff over here? This was coral during the last ice age. As we explore this zone, we see a diversity of creatures we've never seen before. All right, that right there is a sea lily. It's what we call a crinoid. So it's deep, it's cold, and it's dark and animals have special adaptations to survive in this environment. One of the first adaptations that animals have down here is their color. A lot of the animals are red. Now, red, it doesn't seem like a very likely color because it's so bright to us up on the surface. But when you're down here in the deep sea, red is just like black because red gets absorbed very high up in the water column as light's penetrating through. To help us show that down here, red is the new black, Carl turned off the lights to his sub. Another adaptation many animals have in the deep sea is the ability to bioluminesce. This emission of light is thought to be found in about 90% of deep sea organisms. The next 1,000-4,000 meters is the bathypelagic zone. The bathypelagic zone is the largest zone and is too deep for sunlight to reach. 
Alright, where we are right now is in the Bathal Zone, sometimes called the Bathopelagic Zone. Now it's in the zone just below the Mesopelagic Zone, where no light ever penetrates. But since Carl's sub won't dive much deeper, we'll stop here and explore the bottom where organisms survive by feeding on organic matter from above. Oh, look at, oh. oh, he's got really long legs. Down here, every organism we see might be new to science. The abyssal pelagic zone is the next 4,000 to 6,000 meters. It's low in oxygen, nutrients, and food, and is very dark and cold.